All right, Kimmy. I'm here with Kimmy James, and uh, we're doing the next Spotlight Coach Spotlight interview. I'm so excited to have you here uh, and hear all about uh, what you're doing with your coaching business. So thanks for talking today. Thanks for having me, Greg. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be able to, to do this and support those Great. out. <laughs> well, I love to start by just asking, what are you celebrating right now? I am celebrating, for me, a new chapter in my life. I have uh, recently just went through a divorce. And so I, I am really separating, uh, celebrating my freedom of that and um, coming into light of um, a new journey of being a single mom and what that experience is like. Um, and I'm celebrating my son, who's just amazing out of, out of the whole journey of it all. That's I don't huge. Have Yes. Yes. <laughs> so um, who is your audience as a coach? My audience as a coach is women um, who are sometimes more executives. Um, but I, I really love to support any woman who is looking for work life balance and creating um, wholeness and like wellness in their life to be able to do every area of their life, but just to be able to do it well. I love it. And uh, what is it that you really want for the people that you're coaching? What I really want for them is to know that they don't have to give up any particular area of their life um, to solely just focus on one area. I truly believe that there are so many different seasons that as women, like we experience from marriage to motherhood, to jobs, to just fun time, being a sister, a daughter, an aunt, whatever that looks like. And so what I want for them is to be able to see that they can, they can do all of those areas and some uh, knowing where like the priority is for each of those and then creating a balance being okay with being in the season of motherhood and that be your only focus, being okay with in the season of a, a manager in your job and that's your number one focus. Or it might be that you're a newlywed and that might need to be your focus right now. Whatever it might be is it's okay if you move things back or move things up um, as long as you have that balance in your life. Mm, I love it. I love how you light up when you talk about that. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's for me because obviously that's one thing I had to learn and experience was how do I, as an executive manager in my corporate job and then a coach and running a nonprofit and having a son and building relationships and being a daughter, um, I just felt like I wasn't doing all of them well. It was in different places and I felt like I had to be everywhere all the time. And it was okay that I didn't have to be everything um, hundred, you know, 100%. I had to be hundred percent me, but fill in my cup had to be a capacity for each one. Well, a related question. What is, um, some breakthroughs you've had in your own journey as a coach? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, you know, the breakthroughs that I've had as a coach would be, um, what I love about coaching and what I've learned from my mentor coaches is that people around you don't change when you start coaching, like personal relationships, you change how you see people, how you see people changes, which is a direct reflection of how people show up in your life. And it's only because you've changed the way that you've decided to see the world. And you're looking at it through a different set of lenses and as a result, it comes back to you a different way. And so um, for me, the journey has just been, man, this is it's so enlightening. Um, and it's like, I want everybody to experience what I've experienced. And so if you can coach with someone, it's like, you can get to see things differently. And when you really look back at it, nobody around you has probably changed. They're all still the same. How you see them has changed though. I love it. And I think you're, you're speaking to a lot of uh, what's at the heart of this coaching model at the academy, which is really uh, being able to be present to who someone really is, is one of the most empowering things you can do. And that you don't have to work very hard to empower them when you see them in that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you've been a coach for many years and you were actually a, a 
working as a professional coach for several years before you got trained and certified at the Academy for Coaching Excellence. So uh, what made you decide to get trained at the Academy and what's the difference that it's made for you as a coach? Yeah, so that's a good question. I was coaching quite a few years before I came to the academy, but I wouldn't, now that I look back on it, call it coaching. I would look at it as calling, um, doing really hard work. <laughs> uh, it was like, if I could define it now, it would be more like consulting. I would get clients in and I would like walk them through a process and do the paperwork for them and call them and, and push them and push them and tug at them. And so I was like, but I'm a coach, I'm a coach. And uh, when I came to the academy and I started doing the work, I realized that was not necessarily, it was not coaching. It was just walking people through their, their life journey the best I knew how. And now when I look at it, it's, it's easy. Like I can, I can sit and coach and I could do it all day long because it is now easy to do. And when I, um, I had the opportunity and I was very fortunate to have my mom come through ACE and she is, she's a coach as well. And so as an alumni of ACE, again, when I saw her and I saw her experience of going through that years ago, I saw how she showed up in relationships with our family members, with me, with people. And she kept talking about these, my standards of integrity and, and who she was as a person. And, and I was like, I really want to get to know coaching like that. I really want to experience a level of training where I'm not working so hard. Um, so like I said, I was so fortunate to have her to lead me and guide me over and say, you know, this is the program I did. It's an amazing program. Check it out. If you love what you're seeing from me and what I'm producing with clients, this is what you could do when you finish with this program. And so it was like no question in doubt when I came over to ACE and I saw the difference in what I was doing before consulting and then what I'm doing now, which is coaching, right? With, with grace and ease, like just so easily being able to talk to people and see them truly through a journey of coaching now. Well said, I love how you put that. Yeah. It's just the best. Um, so what has your experience been as a black woman in the coaching industry? What's been unique about uh, that identity in this uh, industry? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. One of the areas that I'm working with and what I really started with coaching is I felt like there was some disparities, like there was just some missing parts in the African-American community and people of color in general. So one of the things that culturally is that um, counseling was like frowned upon, right? It, and so, um, and we just didn't have access to it. There's already disparity in the health differences and availability to people of color. And so if we weren't even looking at getting counseling, then we definitely had no clue what coaching was. Right. And so I wanted to start to segue where I, I reached out and I was getting counseling, but I said, you know, counseling is dealing really with my past issues. I want to know how do I move forward now? And so learning that coaching helps you to really navigate this life plan to move forward, like our next step, like any coach would do, it trains you up. Coaching trains your brain. And so I wanted to be able to take that into the community with women, African-American women, women of color to say like, even if you don't want to do counseling, even if you think counseling isn't a thing for you, there is this other concept of coaching where we can really talk about and focus on where you wanna go in life. And I'm gonna do this on a scale, like on, on a sliding scale. Of course, I started off doing it at no cost and then it was a sliding scale. And as I progressed in my coaching and got certified, of course that has, um, taking me to another level for income purposes, but I still go back to my true roots of if you need a coach, I'm willing to coach you. As a woman of color and in a community where I see the disparities, I want to support you um, because I know the challenges that you're having at work. I understand the differences that you might be facing when it comes to motherhood, to being single, to being married, whatever that looks like, I can better understand with you. So um, bringing coaching and normalizing it to say, it's okay, counseling's okay as well, but I really can support you in this area. I love that. And you're doing such great work. And uh, what you're describing is such a demonstration of what's possible 
in terms of having a business that is both generous and inclusive, but also thriving, you know, that it doesn't need to be an either or. So I love that you're really demonstrating that with how you're building your business and how you, how you built your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to open up the doors for more people to ask questions about it and, and put myself out there and bring in coaches that are people of color. I love that ACE has a platform um, in our Slack channels where we're, we're talking about like the justice and quality and inclusion of everybody um, to be able to come and do this as a coach, but then also for our clients who are looking to be coached and looking for the same looking for the same face across the, across the table when they're talking to them. Yeah. So important. Mm -hmm. So coaching is a relatively new industry. And as you're describing, um, you know, especially for communities of color, it's unfamiliar uh, in a lot of ways. And that's, you're doing some great work uh, spreading the word about it, but what would you say is the value of coaching within a community? Yeah, so the value of coaching within a community is that you really do get to learn. You get to learn that community. Um, you get to you get to see what are the challenges that they're having. What are the disadvantages? What are the advantages? What are things that you can really um, pull in that would really like you know um, things that you can kind of match with and coach about. You really can create a niche and be specialized in a certain area, and that just brings you to like another area of coaching. So that there is a niche when I'm working with people of color or in an organization who really focuses on that. So it's, um, it's really important. And I think altogether, like it can really be aligned with, with what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to accomplish. I, I have a nonprofit. We support specifically um, women of color and military families who are trying to get services that really are without of their reach due to their income and barriers that they're experiencing. Oh, great. So you, what's the name of your nonprofit? Divine Queens Foundation. Oh, I love it. Good. And uh, is there any way that folks watching this might support that nonprofit? There is, yeah. You can go to www.divinequeens.org and you can either support there by giving to the cause to be able to support these military families um, and be able to, for those that are coaches or that looking to support individuals, what we do is we offer coaching services to people at no cost. And we find coaches that um, can really help walk people through their life challenges. So it's making a connection between the coaching and um, clients and, and the military and just supporting our troops. So when you have a, a supportive woman at a uh, wife or a partner at home, that military troop member can go out and really do the work and uh, serve and protect us here back home. Wow. Great. We'll make sure to put that uh, link in the comments as well. Great. Great. What would you say to past Kimmy just getting started on your coaching journey? Hmm. It's a good question. What would I say to past Kimmy? I would say, uh, don't, don't give up. I would say, um, invest in yourself, continue in the process, find a way to do it. When I started originally looking at the coaching platform, and I think I had even reached out to you, Greg, at the time, it was how, how can I do this investment, right? And if you look at this, this, the program as an investment is how can I do this investment? And I wasn't going to let anything stop me. And I would say to that past Kimmy, like you did a job well done, went out, I found sponsors. I did, you know, uh, fundraisers and different opportunities to be able to put myself through the program, applied for scholarships and opportunities. And I would say, just don't give up. And if you have something that you know that's innate within you, um, put it to use and make that to be a wealth builder for you in the process. Love it. And kind of similar question, uh, if somebody's watching this and considering a career as a coach themselves, mm -hmm. uh, any advice that you'd give to them? I would, I, I would say, number one I would say is go to ACE. <laughs> I would say sign up for ACE. 
And even if you don't sign up just for the, if you don't sign up at first just for the coaching program, if you sign up for Mastering Life Energies or any of the book studies, any of the reviews, any opportunity that you get to listen to the staff, listen to Dr. Maria, talk to Beth Ann, you know, coaches like such as yourself that are on staff. If you just talk just a couple minutes to an ACE professional, you realize just how quickly you are in good hands with coaching. And it's a different, I looked all around for a lot of different schools, even though my mom had referred me to ACE, I still looked around and I said, you know, what's other opportunities? But ACE kept coming back up, whether you were like searching in New York, whether you were searching in Ohio, you were searching out of the country. If you looked for a program, ACE still came up. They still supported nationwide. And it's a difference when you're getting a training and you're at like going to junior college versus like Pepperdine or Harvard or Stanford. ACE is like the heart, the, you know, the Harvard and the Stanford of coaching programs. And so I would say really do your homework and uh, find where you really want to invest your time and your training. And for me, I found the easiest way to do that was through ACE and it was offered online. And that was like the number one thing was that I could do this through COVID very quickly now that I look back around to doing it. And um, it's like, wow, I got through that so fast. And it was all done in the comfort of my home. And I didn't miss a beat with the training. And that's how great ACE is, that you felt like you were front and center. And I felt like I got the same training through Zoom that my mom got in person years ago, if not better. Well, that's what we love to hear, Kimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Um, Anything else? If I mean, if people got one thing out of watching this interview, you've said so many brilliant things, but uh, what would you want people to take away from listening to you? I would want people to first, I'll get in the category of coaches. So those that are looking to get into coaching, um, say, is this, can this be a career? Is this something that I can do? What does it really look like for me? I want to absolutely tell you, yes, coaching is an area that you can go into um, that when you come through a program and you're trained and you have your ICF certification, you can truly come out coaching and do very, very well. I never thought, Greg, that at the beginning of coaching, um, I was just doing it as an executive manager. I have staff. So I was just coaching myself already, my staff. But when I came out of program and got certified, I didn't realize the opportunities in the companies that would reach out and the, and the opportunities for, for in additional income. And so I would say to anyone, yes, there are opportunities out there and um, it's endless, the possibilities that you could go into with coaching. You can keep a corporate job, you can do it part-time or you can go into it full-time, whatever you wanna do. So I would say to the coaches continue in that, um, in that area. But for those that are looking to get a coach, I would say truly look, search and find a coach, find something that, find someone that's really going to support you and navigate through life with you and walk through a process with you, allow for some accountability. But just number one thing is be willing. If you are willing and you are coachable, um, I tell people whatever issue is going on in your life, if good or bad, there's a coach for that. So it's a coach for everything that you're looking for. I want to promote. I want to not work. I want to retire. I want to have a better relationship. I want to be a better mom, uh, whatever. I want to work out more. There's a coach for that. So you can find a good coach. And, and I really highlight that um, you find an ACE coach. You're all around in good hands for sure. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh giving us your time and your, your brilliance today. Um, if yeah. folks wanna hire you or get in touch, what, what do they do? Yeah, so you can reach out to me at www.dynamickimmy.com. You can also reach me and listen to me at the Dynamic Effect podcast where we're doing every week and talking about um, every situation that you could think about in life, some tools, some tips and resources that are available. And I can be reached by uh, calling 916-237-2180. And that will be dynamic Perfect. coaching. Perfect. And we'll put those links uh, in the comments for sure. Thanks, Greg. I think, thank you so much for the opportunity and just being able to share my experience as a coach, as a woman of color, 
um, and be highlighted for some opportunities for others to be able to experience the same joy that I have with coaching. Oh, my privilege, my privilege. Thank Thanks, you. Kimmy. You're welcome.